There's a full There's moon horizon, folks. Horizon. Let's go dancing in the light. Hello to you wherever you are on behalf of our organizers, the expat fairs, and welcome to Harvest Moon as we take a journey through the imaginations of Ingela Johansson and her friends over the next 90 minutes. My name is Jonathan. I'm proud to be alongside you for this journey of exploration, and I apologize if you found my introduction a little bit sappy. Please rest assured it's only necessary because art in its nature is about inspiring people to leave the normal, to get outside their comfort zone, to find new inspirations and sources of life. Now that we're doing this virtually more than ever, I have one request of you over the next 90 minutes. No matter where you are, how high up in the sky the sun is right now, just pretend, take a flight of fancy with us. For the next 90 minutes, pretend that it is evening. The dusk is out. The light is going down and darkness is moving in. However, soon a new light will come to shine upon you and your field, bringing you new sources of inspiration and perhaps a new path forward. This is what Harvest Moon is all about. Let's find out more by watching this short video. All creative forms, that's also why we, you know, in Harvest Moon, we have dance, we have music, we have art, we have the, this discussions and connections. So all of these things, yes, they do go together and they will help us to reach for new ideas. How wonderfully, well, abstract, how wonderfully right? abstract, I'm sure you got the same question I'm as sure everybody here. Question. Actually, what is Harvest Moon all about, right? Let's, let's get down to brass tacks. Well, it's several things. First of all, the next 90 minutes is actually the latest solo exhibition by Ingela Johansson, one of Sweden's most celebrated contemporary artists today. Inspired by the Harvest Moon, she has created 24 unique pieces which are gonna be premiering this evening. And they are themed after the four phases or the four acts of the harvest moon. The sunset, the night, the moon, and lastly, the dawn of a new day. So over the next 90 minutes, you're gonna be seeing these 24 new pieces of art in blocks of six. The first one is coming up in just a few minutes time. However, this is more than just your typical art exhibition. It had to be, right? We're doing this virtually. So instead of seeing this as a setback, let's take this as an opportunity. We've taken this as our opportunity to mix Ingela's art in with contributions, inspirations from some of her friends and the people who have inspired her over the years. So you're not only going to be seeing her art, but you're also going to be enjoying some music, getting inspired by talks from well-known thought leaders and TEDx speakers and generally just indulging in the poetry of life. What we hope you get out of tonight is not only seeing the art, but also a sense of realization and a spark of inspiration to reinvent something in your life. See something through a new light. No matter what your line of work, whether you're in the creative industries, whether you're in business, whether you're in international relations, the pandemic has changed the way that we live and it's given us the opportunity to take ownership of a new way of operating. So that's what we hope you get from the next 90 minutes. We're also really happy to have the support this evening from the Swedish Embassy in Singapore. And on that note, I'd like to pass it over to Miss Jenny Egemark, who is the Deputy Head of Mission at the Swedish Embassy in Singapore. Over to you, Jenny. My name is Jenny Egemark. I'm the deputy head 
at the Swedish Embassy in Singapore. I'm happy that Ingela invited us to this Harvest Moon event to celebrate creativity and innovation and the relationship between Sweden and, and Singapore. Sweden has had an embassy here since 1966 and uh, we have a long-standing good relationship between our countries. We have a lot of business companies here, around 300, working within the Singaporean market, but mainly for the whole region and the neighboring countries. Big companies like Volvo, Scania, Ericsson, they're all here and we are happy to see that they contribute with their innovation, technology and new ideas to Singapore and the region overall. On the 25th of May, we are celebrating this regional business in a regional business summit. It's the third in a series of this kind of summit where we gather Swedish business, Singaporean, but also partners and companies from the Philippines, Thailand, Vietnam and other neighboring countries. This year, we want to focus on the reset. We think a reset will follow after the COVID crisis. And the discussion we will have at our summit will mainly focus on sustainability and digitalization. Sustainability is an important issue, high on everyone's agenda, from governments to business. We all have to work in to get the world a more greener and better place. And we are very happy that we have a lot of Swedish companies and solutions when it comes to sustainable innovation. When it comes to digitalization, we are all part of a digital revolution. We are all very used to meet our loved ones over Zoom coffee, work over Skype, and to our children are used to having lessons from home. So Harvest Moon is an important part of this. We need to be able to co-create even though we're not in the same country, even though we're not able to travel to each other. And we think there are a lot of possibilities out there to meet in a new way and to find new partnerships and be creative together. So let us celebrate through music, dance, art and business and find new grounds and new ways of working together. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jenny for that fantastic introduction. And of course, it is about finding new ways to work together. We're forced to do that. And sometimes necessity can be the mother of invention. Now, speaking about inventions, it's time to meet the creative brain whose artworks are gonna be peppering the next hour and a half. She is, of course, Ingela Johansson. And many of you will be quite familiar with her work. Hint, hint, you may also own a couple of her pieces. They're fantastic. You will know exactly how to describe them, but I'm gonna give you the definition of what she is. First of all, she is one of Sweden's most celebrated contemporary artists. She's received grants from the National Swedish Grants Committee to do her work around the world. She's been exhibited in nine countries over nine years and was named as one of the top 100 contemporary artists at the Art Dubai Fair 2016. On top of this, her work can be found in private collections across the world, in museums, in personal private collections, and much, much more. Ultimately, Ingela believes that she is inspired in her art through nature and the world around her. Before we meet Ingela in person, which we're going to do in just a few minutes time, let's catch up with her at a previous date as she brings us on a live art painting journey spread over four acts and we get a little insight into the thinking behind that creativity.
Hmm, some rather unconventional methods right there. Is that coffee I see there, Ingela? I think I see that. Now, she's of course a mixed media contemporary artist, and she's known for employing different styles, methods, and approaches in her works of art, which you'll see over the collection, which is spread over four acts. Now, right now, we are still in the sunset act, so what you saw was something a little bit more brighter, but I think you're going to see an evolution in Ingela's styles over the next three acts as she gets into more moody, darker colors as well. For now, though, as it's sunset, we can still see clearly. So on that note, here's a rendition of that famous song, I Can, St I Can See Clearly, performed by three outstanding Swedish artists. They are singer-songwriters Leah Kinnell and Kasper Persson, accompanied by choreographer and dancer Suzanne Rink Kulgren. Take it away, guys. I can see all obstacles in my way I've Gone up the dark clouds that had me blind It's gonna be a bright, 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 sunshiny day It's gonna be a bright, 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 sunshiny day I think I can make it now the rain is gone All of the bad feelings have disappeared Here is the rainbow I've been praying for It's gonna be a bright, 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 sunshiny day it's gonna be a bright, 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 sunshiny day. Oh, look straight ahead, it's nothing but blue skies. And look all around, it's nothing but blue skies. I can see all obstacles in my way Gone are the dark clouds that have me blind It's gonna be a bright, 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 sunshiny day It's gonna be a bright, 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 sunshiny day It's gonna be a bright Bright, bright, sunshiny day It's gonna be a bright, 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 sunshiny day Wow, there you go guys. Thank you very much Leah, Casper and Suzanne for bringing us that multifarious experience of just how we can see clearly now. And moving from the musical to the visual, now let's discover the first six paintings that Ingela has to share with us tonight as part of her Harvest Moon collection. Now, in a recent interview with the expat fairs who are the organizers of this event, Ingela said something quite interesting. She said, I do believe that we pick colors depending on the landscape around us, and that color is connected to our emotions. So, since this evening, no matter where you are, is divided into four sections and right now is sunset, let's find out how the colors of the sunset have inspired Ingela's emotions. Here are the first six paintings of the Harvest Moon collection presented virtually and digitally.
have it. It's just like being there in person, isn't it? They even give you the background noise, little hotel lobby music. You know, gets you in the mood to want to purchase a little bit of art, right? Okay, I said that for a reason because right now we're going to link you up with how you can buy this art virtually, digitally, and get it delivered to you. Ingla does work with a company called Club Artisans. You can. Open your browser right now and go to Club Artisans, C L U B A R T I S A N S dot net, and purchase those paintings, which we're going to go through one by one right now. All of them inspired, of course, by the sunset. This one that you see here is called Steering. And English words, this is about standing on your own power. It's about finding your direction in life. Moving forward with the confidence that's required, the same kind of confidence that is required to stand on a small boat like that in a Swedish river, which can't be easy. So kudos to you, Ingela. Moving on, the second piece was, well, you know what? This one's called the Golden Hour. And if you are an art lover and you're not inspired by the Golden Hour, you may just be in the wrong place, guys, because. There is just that little window of opportunity. I may argue it's even less than an hour, which is truly inspirational. And this captures that moment perfectly in the sunset. Third piece in the 24-piece Harvest Moon collection is called Strings. In fact, note, I'm going to ask Ingela later why she called it Strings. At the same time, we are seeing a beautiful cityscape. I bet that's not Stockholm. That looks somewhere a little bit more grittier to me. I know it's not Singapore either, guys, but that's definitely an evocative street-side scene there. Now, the sunset's also a time for contemplation, and our fourth painting brings that out very well. It's called Purpose. The central circle here, according to Ingela, represents the purpose that the woman, the object of this image, finds. She finds focus and purpose in her life, and she's drawn towards it as she moves into the next chapter. Now, our fifth painting is called "At Sea." It is about reflecting and taking time to just be, as many of us have done during 2020. A time to stand still may be quite difficult for many of us who like to be a mile a minute, but the benefits of standing still. And reflecting is something that we may not feel straight away. This captures that, and quite a con contemplative piece. And lastly, this one's called Purple Night. This depicts two friends who are sitting around in a beautiful landscape, speaking about what 2020 has meant to them. As you can see, the beautiful. Is that the sun there? That's the sun. That's the sun setting. I thought that might have been the harvest moon, but I got that one wrong. That's the sun setting amidst the darkness that is already rising. Definitely, and also a depiction of the golden hour. And you can purchase all of these unique pieces at clubartisans.net. And can I also mention Ingela's website, where you can find out more about her? It's called Swedish Art and Design. dot com. I'm sure if I got that one wrong, Ingela will correct me in just a few minutes. SwedishArtAndDesign. dot com. Find out more about the artists. Head on over to ClubArtisans. dot net if you're interested to find more about pricing, shipping, purchasing these lovely pieces of art themed after Harvest Moon, Ingela's latest collection. And so with that, the sun has officially set. Darkness is now rolling in. Please get your parka on, and let's see what the night. Has in store. Okay, second chapter. The night is quite a contemplative time, and at this moment, we find Ingela in contemplative mode, speaking about what the night means to her paintings, but also in general, about the thinking behind her paintings 
and the moments that give her most joy in doing her art. Over to you, Ingela. My name is Ingela Johansson, and I'm a storyteller in art. I used to live, work and exhibit in Singapore and Malaysia for several years. But now I'm really happy that we can do this global exhibition. And it's been a cooperation between people in Singapore, Malaysia, Sweden, Norway, Germany to get this all together. That is one of the best things in my life, to work with people from all over the world. The other part that I love the most is when a collector connects to a painting. When you find a painting that is yours. I remember that we had this exhibition at the Volvo Art Loft in Singapore. And we sold out in one and a half hours. And there was this particular couple that was standing in front of a painting and she was crying. So I walked up to her a bit anxious and she just said, this painting, it's about me. I can see my childhood in this painting, but then I can also see my journey to becoming the successful woman that I am today, working here in Singapore from Norway. Of course, she has that painting, but it can also happen through social media. I got this message on LinkedIn saying, today I found my painting. It was a friend who is a leadership coach that saw a painting that brought her back to a holiday with her sister, and it had been their best holiday together. Now, every morning, she takes a glass of water, squeezes a lemon, and she sits down with this painting for a while to start her day. And it's a beautiful feeling to start your day in the holiday mood, focused, happy. And I believe, and I think a lot of you do as well, that how we start our day is quite often the way we end our day. To me, before I do any painting, I meditate, do some sketching and I reflect. And I've been doing this process since 2016. And I do run courses and I've written a book about it. That's how important this starting out process has become for me. So in my art, you will find a variety of mediums and a big array of colors, textures and symbols. And I try to incorporate each place that I've been to and people that I met into the different collections. Sometimes you will see a symbol that is quite obvious, but in many paintings, the symbols are more embedded. They can be hidden in textures and layers, or they can be constructed into the composition of the background. So you have to look for them. One of my favorite colors is red. And in almost all my work, you will find red somewhere. That's my signature color. And there's another theme that I come back to, and that is women's back. Because I believe that there's a secret in a woman's back. It's how you can see how she's feeling the way she holds her neck and spine. It tells a lot about where she is in life and how she is, how she really is. So that's why I love painting women's backs. But for this collection, the inspiration has come from, you know, spending a lot of time in nature, extremely grateful that we can still do that, that nature is open. But also spending more time on self-reflection, which I think that most of us has during these times. But also in finding new ways in how we can connect to our community. So these three things have been the major inspiration. And I have created airy landscapes with wide horizons 
and I'm picturing these paintings to hang in a high rise in a big city to bring stress and calm and nature into these homes. I've also been asking all my friends, what do you miss the most? And for me and, well, I think everyone has answered the same thing, no matter from where you are in the world, it's a hug. So a hug in a painting certain, certainly now has a different story to it than what it had before, say, 2019. So I hope that tonight you will find your painting. And please remember, it doesn't really matter what I meant when I painted it, it's your story that counts. Sorry guys, I was just trying to figure out what Ingela was painting right there. Um, in fact, I've been told that what she's putting together with this virtual art painting, but actually it's a mystery art painting, is that over four acts she's going to be depicting one particular very evocative image from Harvest Moon, the show. And in fact, I have a challenge for you. If you are right now on the Expat Fairs Facebook page and you already know which person or which scene from Harvest Moon she's painting, and you can guess it, drop us a message. And uh, let's see whether your art skills and your art eyes are on point, okay? So Ingela has just given us some fantastic sharing um, on really why she does her art. Um, it's not just about her, it's about the story that it then reflects in the person who views it. So now we're gonna reflect her on the screen right now and get her up on screen for a one-on-one -on -one conversation. One -on -one Ingela, conversation. are you Ingela, there? Are you I can see there? you. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Ingela, I'm, congratulations, I'm congratulations first and foremost on, on your latest on your, uh, solo exhibition, uh, solo Harvest, Harvest Moon. How are you feeling? Moon. How are you feeling? Thank you, Jonathan. I'm feeling extremely grateful would be the first word that comes out of my mind because, you know, when I hear Leah sing with Casper and I see Susan dance. I remember Susan dancing when she was six years old. And, you know, we were playing and we were interrupted because she had to go to practice. <laughs> and tonight, I think it's in the next act, Leah will actually sing one of the songs that we have created together. I cannot hold one, you know, tune. I cannot sing. <laughs> so I was always writing the lyrics because that was okay. kind of the only, okay. yeah. <laughs> so this song that you will hear called Small Black Boats, uh, it will bring in my mother to this event because she's no longer with us. But this song was made to her memory. So, and it was made during high school. So it's a long time ago, guys. <laughs> 
So Casper, so Leah, Leah, Suzanne are all, Suzanne are all uh, just to get a picture, uh, they're all old friends of yours, aren't they? Yes. Casper, however, is a new friend of mine because he's okay. much younger than me, Leah and Suzanne, but we're very happy to have him on board because, you know, planning this, and I know that Leah and Casper was really thinking about how to do Harvest Moon that you will hear later because, you know, it's usually done with a full set of instruments and they had one guitar and two voices. And to me, how they did it, it's really about how limitations sometimes can spiral creativity into innovation. And that's what I love. I would also like to thank the speakers because they're not like, you know, random great speakers. They are also friends of mine. So I'm so happy that they have decided to join. And I think for anyone that will listen to every speech, there's so many good nuggets around creativity, innovation, well-being, and how to, you know, dare to do things be courageous and dare to try new things, Absolutely. which we all have to do right now. And, and that's exactly, and what, that's you've, exactly what, what you've done you've here, right? Done. Um, I'm not an art curator, I'm not an art consumer, nor do I have the budget to purchase art. But I do know that there have been very few solo exhibitions out there which have taken this virtual, physical format. I'm curious, how did this idea come about? And, and in terms of you producing the paintings for this, um, was it done when, when the name Harvest Moon was already settled? Or had you already painted these paintings and then come up with the name Harvest Moon to come along with it in the event? Healthy. Well, I think it all started with my art agent, Betty Ashman, who had this idea that we should do something virtual. So I did do a small virtual exhibition called Contrasts, you know, to try the concept out and learn, which was okay. needed because, you know, the learning curve has many steps. And then uh, Betty found Winston, I think through Natalie, who you will hear tonight. And Winston was a visionary behind Harvest Moon and when he was telling me this concept for the first time I was completely blown away because it really depicts how we have I think most of us have been feeling like how the sunset is going down when we started to hear about you know this pandemic. virus pandemic. coming yeah pandemic yeah. and yeah. then during the night was the time when we had to cancel all our plans I mean nothing was really as we had expected. Yeah. And now we're more in the harvest moon, bridging on the sunrise where we are, as another friend said, Dr. Virpi, she said, we're moving into the era of creativity, the era of innovation. And I think that's so true as well. So it's so interesting to meet, I mean, and then you have all the technical team that has pulled this together you and everyone else it's it's quite amazing to see singapore malaysia sweden norway germany uk and we managed to do this with Absolutely. yeah it's cool now that's something which i've now heard many times having read your having interviews been. is that you've had a pretty interesting life i mean as an artist firstly you've had some very interesting exhibitions you're part of various private collections but one thing which stands out is your international approach to all of this um, and starting as someone in Sweden, you ended up moving to Southeast Asia for five years. How, how does that come about and how has that changed you? Well, my father traveled to Japan when I was quite small and I remember him coming back a changed, you know, totally changed by everything that he had seen and he brought mm. home many great photo and art books. So already then I was kind of sketching Asian inspired art and I love the the Asian red which is usually you know darker than what I have on now your um, signature your red signature red yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I think the inspiration started you know already in childhood and then when my family got this opportunity to move to Singapore we just said yes all of us hmm. yeah. And how, how has your art changed since you, since you had that international exposure? Is there a clear before and after for you? 
I believe that the you know the colors are much stronger. I do believe that we are inspired by the landscape that we're in. I mean, if you walk in the rainforest, there's so many like natural strong red flowers everywhere. Like, yeah, but here we have the you know the long winters with a lot of white, so we tend to like a lot of white, very simple. Yep, and of course you're now back in your studio in Sweden. Um, which is usually colorful as always, even though the outside may look a little bit different. Um, I was just wondering, you know, in the art scene, in the creative industries, we thrive off this personal connection. We want to be able to, to see people, to talk to people. How has the pandemic affected the way you go about the business side of what you do, the, the marketing, the selling, the connection making? Yeah, I think that's why we're here tonight at Harvest Mood this evening, because we do meet this way. We do meet virtually in many ways right now. So I think in one way, it's also great because it's the first time I can invite people no matter where they live. You know, that's the good thing about this. The hard part is for everyone to try to figure out when is it live, you know, where, where I am. You know in my time zone. <laughs> so yeah. And I also wanted to ask you, 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 you've touched several times on this idea of Zen art. Could you tell me a little bit more yeah. about the role of Zen in your art and the meditation that you do and how it, how it affects the art that you produce? Sure I can. So the painting you see behind me is called Recharge. And to me it's I noticed that to to do good work, to be my best self, I need to start with you know calming myself and listening inwards. So I do that. I use meditation, mindfulness, and nature to do that. And then if I start to create straight after that, you know, really straight after that, it's so much easier to flow in your work. And I think that's true for any work that you do. And I also noticed that when I started to do a written reflection after creativity, I learned so much more. So I even created courses in this and I wrote a book about it. And you can okay. find that on, on Zen Art. Yeah. What does that say? What does that, that say? say? Creative flow. Creative flow. Creative flow. Yeah. Ingela Johansson. Ingela. Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. Okay. Okay. So you can pick up that book as well. Um, I'd be. Li I'd like to hear a little bit more about about how you've applied it here. When it came to Harvest Moon, what were some of the? Was there any particular painting that gave you the most flow that you can remember? Any emotions any that emotion? come to mind? You know, I was so inspired by the process, and that I think you will see in the mystery painting being painted as we move on in this show. But I mean, a lot of these paintings have been painted while listening to rehearsals from Leah and Casper, you know, watching the rehearsal when I saw the choreography for the first time that Susan has done just for this show. I mean, it's an amazing collaboration. And then you become so inspired, you know, by all these different elements and also how Winston portrayed the harvest moon. And as I'm back in Sweden now, you know, the landscape, the sunset, the sunrise, you know, I s try to catch it almost every day if I can. So it's how many hours, how of, many sun, hours of, of sun per day sun are you getting right now? right now? Well, right now it's, you know, really quite light. I think okay. it's light, okay. un yeah, until around eight or nine and spring is finally coming now. I can see the magnolias this morning. They're starting to spread their leaves. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, that's isn't fantastic. It? Cherry blossoms in Stockholm. Wow. wow. Over here in Singapore here and Malaysia, Singapore. we get the same flowers, the same sunset and the sunrise every day. Very predictable. But beautiful. <laughs> but beautiful at the same beautiful. time. Yeah. Um, so we're going to um, move on now to your friend, Kirsten. I thought you might tell us a little bit more for the audience to hear about, about who Kirsten is, what she means to you, and what she's going to be speaking about. Kleine Braten will speak to you from Kongsberg. 
And I've been talking to her about this speech, so I know it's, it's a great speech. She talks about being an ordinary woman, and I will just let you know, she's far from ordinary. She is extraordinary. I used to know her from Singapore and Norway. So she's a dear friend of mine, and she's the uh, vice president of deck machinery at Kongsberg Maritime, now in Norway. And now that you've said that, I'm not going to make a mistake on her name. So thank you, Ingela. <laughs> now, before I, we move on to Kirsten, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. Um, I'm obviously going to talk and tell people about all your artwork in the next hour or so. But is there a closing message which you'd like to deliver to your audience around the world, maybe where they could, they could purchase your art or find out more about um, your creative process? Okay. I hope you have the links to clubartisans.net and Swedish Art and Design. But most of all, I would like to thank you know the whole team in Singapore, Malaysia, and Sweden. Thank you so much to everyone. And if you stick around and listen to these speakers, I hope that you will hear a spark of purpose for you and get some new ideas. Thanks. What a fantastic way what to end it off. Ingela, on behalf of everyone at the Expat Fairs, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to speak to you. And I hope that you'll enjoy the rest of the show with us. Thank you, Ingela. Thank you, Jonathan. And there we go. Thank you, Ingela. And now we're going to move forward to, as Ingela said, one of her best friends, one of her oldest friends, uh, Kirsten klein Bratten is the Senior Vice President at Kongsberg Maritime in Norway. Not only is she a business leader, but she's also an avid art collector and appreciator. And she's an example of someone who sees art not only as decoration, but something that brings out an additional element in her life and her work. A new spark, if you will. So I'm now going to head over to Kirsten, speaking about positivity. Hi, everybody. Uh, I am Kerstin Kleine Bråten, uh, an ordinary woman, half Norwegian and half Dutch, and living uh, with my husband and my two kids in a small city in Norway. I would like to start when I was a youngster, just to take the introduction from there. Uh, as a youngster, uh, I did many sport activities and I loved to be outdoor. And in Norway, you have that opportunity. I had small or non-ambitions at school until I started my school career uh, within the military Navy. Uh, and then I decided to take a master within biotechnology um, when my grades were too poor to jo actually join the medicine study. And by mm -hmm. a coincidence, I started my job career within oil and gas and little to do with my education. Um, and then uh, later on, transferred later, then into the maritime business where I work today. I have always been like a restless and impatient person. And uh, I grabbed the opportunity early in my engineer career and moved abroad. First, we moved to Brazil uh, where my son was born. That was actually not planned. And then to Singapore uh, a couple of years later. Uh, living abroad has been a, a great uh, journey uh, for me and my mindset and my continuous development. Family-wise, it was tough in periods, I have to admit. However, I think we came out stronger and more mature as a family. Uh, I met great people, uh, both at work and private, People with different background, culture, and other careers uh, have always inspired me and made me curious. As a person and businesswoman, I crave for challenges and complexity. Why? Um, and, but however, I also seek environments that brings my adrenaline and agility into balance. And here come art into play. I met a beautiful woman called Ingela at her home in Singapore in 2013. She's not only a great artist, she's a lovely person with a mindset and a soul reflecting her work. 
Engelas art gives me a combination of peacefulness and energy. The harmony with the colors, the patterns, the history of the art connected, of course, with external factors like people, music, food, dance, and some wine brings me to this unique painting, as you can see behind me. This was the first painting, among others, I was immediately attracted to. It's like falling in love. I would say art is in a way complementary to my work. Art wake up other senses, which is imperative to become something more than just an ordinary businesswoman. Art connects people like other businesses all, all also do. However, in, I would say, different angles. Talking about balance in life, this is important to me. You know, days fly by, uh, busy work schedule, family and other logistics. I think everybody knows all about this. Life balance in Norway is possible possible if you choose it. Everything starts with yourself, your mindset, and of course the priority of life. I have finally started to become more satisfied with my life balance. Soon turning 50 and 25 years in different business roles, most of my career as a leader on different levels in the organization, I have gained experience um, which have matured myself. I enjoy every day much more, though Friday is still my favorite. I stop up more often and reflect and give myself more time to find out what is that gives me an inner drive and motivation and then find time to top up the energy level in order to contribute stronger in the periods where private and work life uh, demands it. Thank you for listening today. Grab the moments and the opportunities. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kirsten, for sharing your insights right there. Now moving forward to a little musical interlude that has a great meaning to Ingela and her friend. Ingela actually played a part in writing this next song. It's called Little Black Boats and it's performed by her very good friend, Leah Kinnell. Take it away. To shore as a touch from below. Hold me, cause time is running. I begged them to come when I felt that I wasn't here but to be close to you. Anymore, but if you really believe in me, the sun will break through if you think. Cause I don't know it that well, and you don't know it that well, but maybe we can work it out. Small black boats has driven to shore And they were carried by the waves Of a force that is fear Small black boats has driven to shore And they were carried by the waves Of a force that is fear Cry Cause your life is It's nestled in a web of Nestled in a web of 
agony And it's slowly reaching out for you and for me You know that small black boat has driven to shore And they were carried by the waves of a force that is fear Small black boat has driven to shore Of the force that is fear Carried by the waves Of the force that is fear Carried by the waves Of the force that is fear Carried by the waves Of the force that is fear And you're back. And I've got to say, Ingela, if you were already not such a great artist, I'd encourage you to pursue a second career as a songwriter, because that song was quite something, actually, I'm sure you, you'll agree, and very emotively performed by Leah and Casper as well. Now, what you've just seen, folks, is you've just seen Ingela's six paintings under the night. And as Ingela explained earlier, the sunset is a time still of some optimism, but the sun is going down. The night is a time when, well, we can be contemplative, but hope may sometimes be draining from us. So what is the optimism that we can glean from the night? Here are the six paintings in this act under her collection, Harvest Moon, starting with the first painting called Blue Walk. Blue Walk is about walking on empty city streets with the color of freedom blue. This to me brings to mind being in the United States for some reason. I feel like I'm walking in the streets of New York City looking at a gallery. A sense of loneliness, contemplativeness, a beautifully sparkling painting. Our second painting is called Hold On. Hold On, according to Ingela, represents the answer to the question about what you have missed most during the pandemic. And she spoke particularly about this image um, in her explanation at the beginning of this act, and she talked particularly about how she enjoys depicting women's backs and how uh, something small like a woman's back and the nuances of it can reflect someone's standing socioeconomically, their past life, and their present life as well. That's Hold On, the second piece in this collection. Our third piece is called Moon Ride. Moonride represents the finding of new hope and new tools, which is what this event is all about. It's about going past the norm and seeing new possibilities in our lives. Hope we can all go on a moon ride sometime soon. Our fourth painting. This one's called One Step. We see a woman, it could be Ingela, judging by her red dress, taking one step forward, entering a new realm. And I think I can see a little bit of moonshine there creeping into the picture on the right side. Please tell me if I'm wrong, art collectors. Just an amateur here. But this one definitely speaks to me. It's simple, yet subtle, yet through its minimalism, depicts a message that's quite powerful as well. Our next piece is called In Transit. According to Ingela, in transit, the thinking behind it was that sometimes in the last year, 2020 in particular, we have felt like we have been lost in transit, stuck in an airport somewhere, and yet nature was still always there and ever present. So maybe at this time, it's a clarion call for us to go back to what has always been there. Not only the environment and nature in the world, but our inner nature as well. 
and to draw inspiration and new ideas from who we truly are on the inside. So those were the six pieces under the night. We've now gone through the darkest part of the evening. Please tell us which of those pieces you liked the most. And of course, you can head over to clubartisans.net if you wish to find out more about how you can purchase any of them. So now that we have seen the darkest part of the Harvest Moon show, now is the main part, the moon itself. The moon represents the finding of new possibilities in a time of despair and hopelessness. And the thinking behind the, the Harvest Moon in particular was actually inspired in part by Ingela's childhood in Sweden. And in countries such as Sweden, as in many North Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere temperate countries, um, the autumn period would be a time when farmers would be slowly starting to wrap up their crops for the year. However, they still want to get more productivity out of them. So what do they do? They take advantage of the fact that the moon at this time of the year is the biggest and the brightest that it is for the whole calendar year. And they work late into the evening, sowing their crops, harvesting their work, making the most of the year, not allowing circumstances to get them down, but turning a negative into a positive and seeing a new way forward. Here we have it, folks. This is the moon. The moon is shining. Let's go out dancing in the light, folks. Here's Casper, Leah, Suzanne, accompanied by Ingela, performing our theme song, Harvest Moon by Neil Young. Come a little bit closer Hear what I have to say Just like children sleep We can dream this night away But there's a full moon rising Let's go dancing in the light We know where the music's playing Let's go out and feel the light Because I'm still in love with you I want to see you dance again Because I'm still in love with you On this harvest moon Strangers, I watch you from afar. When we were lovers, I loved you with all my heart. Now it's getting late And the moon is climbing high I want to celebrate 
see it shining in your eyes Because I'm still in love with you I want to see you dance again Because I'm still in love with you On this harvest moon Because I'm still in love with you I want to see you dance again Because I'm still in love with you On this harvest moon Thank you so much, Casper and Leah, for that wonderful rendition of our theme song, Harvest Moon. Now, where does the concept of Harvest Moon come from? Well, it's that song, and as I said earlier, it's also about reaping and sowing what we can, even though times may be challenging. And it is the product and the brainchild of the curator of today's event, someone who has a unique knack of putting together concepts matching and connecting things and people. His name is Winston Liu. He's a very well-known art curator and TEDx curator and organizer who hails from Penang in Malaysia. Now his work is in two different spheres. I know he wouldn't want us to go on and on about this, but he does do two particular things. First of all, he works with citywide campaigns in order to spark creativity, art and innovation. And secondly, he also works with private companies in placemaking, which means taking underperforming or underappreciated spaces, breathing new life into them, usually by connecting them to the creative community. So here's Winston sharing on how he came up with the idea of Harvest Moon. Hi everyone, I'm Winston. I'm the curator of Harvest Moon, a borderless creative collaboration across Sweden, Malaysia and Singapore. We're so happy to be here with you today. Thank you so much for making time for this really meaningful creative adventure we are having today. You know, when I was starting to curate for this event, I was thinking about what word could represent the spirit of everyone that is participating in this project? What word could be a word, a gift of perspective to the world right now? Then a word, harvest, came to my mind. Why? Because I was thinking that everyone is struggling or losing something in one way or another, right? And we're all waiting for our labor to bear fruit. So harvest, it's such a fresh moment for all of us because what we have been waiting for so long finally came into completion. So what concept could really bring out that word then? A friend of mine told me about this song by Neil Young and I love it. Have you heard of this song before? There's a part of this song that says, now there's a full moon rising. Let's go dancing in the light. Isn't it beautiful? It's so romantic. It means that we can go dancing in darkness right now and be reminded of the, the sun once shined because we're looking at the moon. It's beautiful. That's exactly what we need right now in this period of time. So Harvest Moon became the theme of this beautiful project. So today you see all of us coming together to collaborate and co-create this adventure, this experience that brings out this message. It is art, it is music, it is creativity, it's poetry, it's a lot of innovation in a way as well. And I just reminded of this concept of co-creation. You know, I was having this conversation with Ingela and Ingela said that it's just fascinating. It started from just us wanting to share the art and then later more and more people jump into this project and then we started to co-create things. And it's not just collaboration, because collaboration means that you put in what you want, what you have, and then we just put things together and show it, right? It is more about convergence because we're all in it, looking at the big purpose 
and then shifting a little bit of how we used to do things and then participating wholeheartedly to create a new thing. It's a paradigm shift for a lot of us here. We're so excited to have done this and done this in this particular time. So I hope that you enjoy the rest of the show and be reminded that you can also dance in the light right now, no matter what's happening in the world right now, no matter what's happening in your life right now. So let's go dancing. Thank you. Thank you, Winston. Now, what Winston has not mentioned there, of course, is that it takes a lot of effort to put together a show like this or any other show, especially in this sort of circumstances, right? This isn't your typical exhibition or art show. We've had to do this virtually. So the idea of harvesting the things that you have been working for is something that we hope that you will all be able to apply and benefit from in your own life. And on the note of today's show, it is the product of collaboration between people from Sweden, Singapore and Malaysia and multiple organizations. And one organization in particular has been central to all of this and they are the expat fairs um, who are organizers for today. Now, what are the expat fairs? Basically, the expat fairs in terms of purpose are an antidote to the traditional commercialized mass market luxury products that you see out there. It's not about cookie cutter luxury. The expat fairs is about connecting cultured individuals to products created by artisans, designers who do things sustainably, with consideration, with meaning, with a story behind it, and ultimately to people and experiences, which is what Ingela Johansson has to offer. So let's go into a little bit of a round table discussion right now. I know that we've got Betty Ashman, the founder of the expat fairs on the line right now. Betty, are you there? Ah, there you are, Betty. And I know someone sitting alongside you. She's Natalie Turner, renowned TEDx speaker on innovation. And we all need a little bit of innovation in our lives, right? Never can be a bad thing. Natalie Turner wrote the book, Yes, You Can Innovate. So she'll be joining Betty alongside Ingela. There we have it. Betty, Natalie, and Ingela, a roundtable discussion on innovation and what truly inspires them in life. Take it away. Hi. I'm glad that everybody is here in this meeting. It's a lovely day today. I find that the beautiful thing about Inge Engler's uh, painting is that each piece has a different meaning, different story, connect to different people in a different way. And it's really beyond beauty, beyond the appreciation of artwork. Each piece interacts as a, as a conversation. Uh, what do you think, Jacqueline? Mm. Absolutely. I've got a lovely painting of Ingalls on my wall in my apartment. And it's a, it's a beautiful painting of a woman, a Chinese woman in a, in a red dress set against the backdrop of Singapore's uh, central business district. And it's really interesting because I, I know culturally that Chinese women will dress in red um, at their weddings. Um, they usually have one ceremony in white and then another one in red. <laughs> right, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, but obviously, and I'm not, I'm not from, you know, I'm not from a, a Chinese background. So my interpretation of it was more that this vibrant woman <laughs> was standing there, you know, standing out amidst this very monochrome grey background, saying, "Here I am, world." <laughs> And, uh, and I loved that. I loved the confidence of it and um, the fact that, you know, a woman would, would uh, you know, would, would be standing there like that. Mm, lovely, yeah. And Injima, what do you think? What were yeah. you paint on paintings? You know, it's very close to the feeling I had when painting it, Natalie. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> yeah, so I can completely relate to that. Wow. And I so wish I would sit next to you in that gorgeous couch, probably in Penang, if I'm right. <laughs> That's right, yes. <laughs> so I'm being back in Sweden and discussing this interview today. We had this quote going, what would you do if you're lost in the forest? And then it said something like, remember, the trees are not lost. And when I was thinking back on 
looking back on that, I would say if I got lost in the forest alone, I would certainly sit down and calm myself for a while, uh, breathe, meditate, and because otherwise I'm certain that I would get even more lost. But usually I don't go out alone in the forest. I go with a group of close friends that are very experienced in hiking. And the last time we were out, we actually ended up in the, the birthplace of Ellen Eriksson, who was, you know, our inventor of the first phone in Sweden. And today Eriksson still employs almost 100,000 people in uh, all over the world. And I ended up in his birthplace uh, just by being lost in the forest. And to me, you know, him starting this communication that makes it possible for me to create Harvest Moon together with amazing people that I know from all over the world. So it kind of ties this communication together. And I remember the spring of 2020 when I was in an apartment in KL reading Natalie's articles on LinkedIn that brought me so much you know, in this time when we felt a lot of fear on what was going to happen, her articles really brought me back to so much hope. And I was so happy that we could co-create with illustrations and your beautiful message about change, Natalie. So that was wonderful. Oh, thank you, Inga. That's fantastic. Thank you. Look at that. Look at that. It's <laughs> lovely to know that as well. It's very touching. And yeah. It's interesting, yeah. isn't it? It's like um, having this spark of purpose. I think that's what really we all need right now, isn't it? It's like it's got, in a lot of us, it's sort of got buried during 2020. And we had to sort of reconfigure ourselves and reinvent ourselves and rediscover actually who we are and uh, be able to, to tap into that aspect, that essence of who we are so that we can create out of that and it sounds like uh, you know that story that you've just shared as well about being lost in the forest to know that when we come out of it we can actually find amazing things like you found Ericsson's house in the middle of the forest yeah. I mean that is absolutely yeah. really <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yes um, in England I find that a lot of the, um, the, the, the people who like the painting are, are very strong, successful, independent women. And uh, I remember one of those paintings, uh, The Transformation, it's called, and it has an impact on one of my friends. Um, she, she, she was at the crossroad and had to make a big decision in her life. Mm -hmm. And after she saw your painting, and she said to me, I make my decision now. And weeks later, she told me, um, your painting, the translation, sent a very strong message to her that she herself can be transformed, can be empowered, and therefore she made that decision. You know, just just because she saw your painting, and it's a wonderful, wonderful story uh, to be to be shared. And uh, I thank you for for that painting. You know, so my friend made a good good decision to carry on with her life. Put on on the red cape and then uh, and uh, and charge on to, uh, with uh, as, as something important in her life wow thank you for sharing that betty that's really strong <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. wow thank you thank you and i mean i've also been connecting with you all well many sundays for the super soul sunday that Natalie's, Natalie and her husband will send out from Penang and danced in my living room and painting together because I think that you know, music, dancing, art can really bring out the spark purpose in us. It gives, it gives, you, it gives, you, it gives you the hope it, and, and, and yeah. it light you, isn't it? Yeah, we let you. Yeah, I think too, like we can often be going through, you know, these difficult times and we can be in that, that sort of no light at the end of the tunnel or 
that aspect of the, the dark night of the soul. But it's what I'm sort of getting from this conversation is we've got to put on our red cape. You know, we've got to stand in our red dress. We've got to stand in, in the beauty and the creativity of who we are. And then out of that comes hope. Out of that comes new ideas, freshness, inspiration, new ways of thinking. And we come up out of the curve and then up and into new light, into new ways of thinking. And I think that your art really inspires that, Ingela. It's, it's such a, it's so inspirational to own a piece of your work and have it on our wall. And every day I walk past it and I see that woman in red and I think of you and I think of your message. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Natalie and Betty for sharing these wonderful reflections. And I just hope that we will continue to co-create in different ways, even when we are, you know, on different, different parts of the world. We can, you know, we used to use this, but now we can use this. And to me, this change has really been how much new things we learn, how many new tools we learn each day to, you know, keep connecting. And that is wonderful. So thank you very much for sharing today and, and being part of this. Well, you're, well, you're most welcome. And thank you, Natalie, thank for joining you. us, joining this meaningful meeting and sharing. And I look forward to see you all in person together. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you, Betty, Natalie, and of course, Ingela. And if any of you have any art around your house, I urge you at this point just to take a little glance around and think about the characters that are depicted there, the scenes that are depicted there, and think how have you subconsciously perhaps been influenced by the art around you? We'd love to hear from you at the expat fairs about that as well. Now, going back to Harvest Moon, the moon is, of course, the central, central inspiration of this entire collection. So brace yourself for some truly eye-popping pieces. Right now, from Ingela Johansson in the third act of our Harvest Moon collection. Let's check it out. vivid than real life and I wish that I owned one of those paintings for my living room. Let's go one by one. The Moon Act paintings, six extraordinary pieces from Ingela Johansson as part of the Harvest Moon collection. Our first piece is called Forward. This is about the need to move forward as the farmers do during harvest in the midst of this very challenging period for humanity. And as you can see here, the oxen are charging forward, even through the rain, even through the water. It's an ode to perseverance, and it gives you a jolt of energy when you look at it too. The second piece is called Hold On. And according to Ingela, well, first of all, isn't that just gorgeous? I mean, I've seen many night skies in my time, but this one truly is evocative. A truly stunning piece from Ingela Johansson. And in her words, this is about the energy that you get from watching a full moon. I can definitely resonate with that. And how everything feels as if it'll be all right. In a way, it's almost reminiscent of that feeling when you look, um, for those of us who have been fortunate enough to look at an eclipse, um, to feel so small in the universe, in the presence of something so much larger and so much more mechanical as the universe is. Our third piece, I mean, how do we top that one, right? Our third piece is called Soft. This one depicts the feeling of being at home, feeling safe, and daring to be vulnerable in a space that you own. Vulnerable enough to experiment with new colors. Vulnerable enough to show certain gradients and subtleties in your personality, as the lady does there. And yet another example, again, of the affinity that Ingela has for women's backs and I would, of course, love to hear what Ingela has to say about what she's depicting 
right here. That one's called Soft, the third piece in the Moon Collection. Moving forward, our next piece is called Blue Moon. And I don't think any explanation here is required other than me singing the Neil Young lyrics. There's a full moon rising. Let's go dancing in the light. This came from Ingela. I'm not trying to parade myself. Ingela says this truly inspired this piece right here. And my eyes are definitely drawn to the top left. That's a gorgeous piece by Ingela. Now, the feature painting, you could say. This one's called Harvest Moon. What did Ingela mean in Harvest Moon here? There are three colors here. It's green, white, and red. For those of you who are Italian, you may feel a pang of national pride, but that's not what Ingela was going after. In for Ingela, green represents the harvest. Red, the idea of change in 2020. And the white bird represents peace, hope. There's also a touch of gray there, which represents hardships. But as, as you can see, the hope of the white color has overcome the hardships of the gray, as we hope that you all do during this new year. Our last piece from Ingela in this mini collection is called Spark of Purpose. It's truly an eye-catching one with some dark red hills in the background, what you might almost consider the sun there, and some contrasts in colors. It's all about taking the time to reflect, taking the time to dive in to connect not only with others, but with our true inner self and finding our own spark of purpose in our life. So those were the six pieces from Ingela Johansson. Please tell us which one you felt that you had a connection with. And if you feel the urge to find out more, once again, you can go to Swedish Art and Design, SwedishArtAndDesign.com. That's Ingela's personal website. Or head on over to Club Artisans, ClubArtisans.net, where you can find more of Ingela's work and purchase one of these unique pieces. So, three acts in. We've gone through the night. We've seen the dusk. We've now seen the moon, and we see brighter days ahead. Is it any surprise that now the dawn is breaking? Check this out. Now, finding our own dawn in life can be a very long and arduous journey. When the night seems so dark, sometimes we need a pang of inspiration. And in order to find that, we need to have that resource of creativity. It's something that is within all of us. Don't believe the myth that only some of us have it. However, you have to find a way and a belief to tap into your inner creativity. We're really happy to welcome right now Daniel Ord. Daniel is an expert on creativity and also is the founder of OmniTouch International, which is actually a customer service consultancy based in Singapore. In his spare time, he was also the chairman of the art club in Singapore. So he's someone who straddles various different sectors in life and makes connections between them, i.e. that is creativity. Here's Daniel Ord speaking about creativity right now. Hello, and welcome to Harvest Moon. I'm Daniel Ward. In 2011, my husband and I decided to open an art gallery in Singapore, where we were living at the time. And our purpose was to introduce people to the artists we had collected in our own home countries. So because I'm from California, we brought in some California artists in their works. And Marcus is from Germany, so we brought in some German artists and European artists in their works. And it was such a terrific experience. It really grew my worldview. We had that gallery for about seven years. And over the course of, of having the gallery, that's how we ran into Ingela. And we had a chance to work together with her. The actual background that you see on the screen at the moment is a picture I took in the gallery about an hour or two before one of Ingela's shows 
began with us. So it was really great to find this memory and have it ready today for Harvest Moon. Now, a few years ago, Inga came to me and asked me to provide a quotation for her book, Create to Flow, a book I definitely recommend. And I'd like to share that quote with you here. I'm gonna read it, so one moment. Self-discovery isn't for the faint of heart, but you're better off grabbing it, saying yes more often to figure out what feels right and what doesn't and shape your own life. Because the alternative, ha having others shape your life for you, isn't that great? And the spiritual genesis of that quote for me has a lot to do with saying yes more often and really questioning why you would say no. Where does the no come from? What's holding you back? Now, I'm a lecturer in my day job, and typically I'm on a hotel stage or, or a corporate conference room. Uh, sharing some topic with my audience. And last year, as the pandemic took hold, as we all know, travel was disrupted. So the events that we had planned just simply weren't going to take place. Ironically, at the same time that was happening, travel was shutting down, meaning my work was shutting down, I found myself holding on very strongly to a belief. And that belief was this, that only face-to-face -face workshops and training and so forth were valuable, were viable and that online wouldn't work. But can you imagine if I had continued to hold on to that belief today, not only would I not have any work to do, I wouldn't have grown as a person. I wouldn't have innovated as a person. And the catalyst for me was this. I was very lucky to have a client in France who called me up and said, Dan, obviously you're not coming to France to run our workshop for us, but we do expect it to happen. You're just going to do it online. That's the way, this is the day to do it, et cetera, et cetera. There was no, no choice here. So I admit that first morning, about a year ago that we started the workshop, I was petrified. I didn't know if I would be able to convey what I wanted to convey and get the same kind of interaction and responses with participants. But that first day went actually okay. And by the third day, things were absolutely humming along. And these days, now a year having gone by, I spend on average three to four days a week talking to people somewhere in the world about some topic and having all the laughs and engagement and learnings that I think we could have achieved in a face-to-face -face environment. So what have I learned from this experience, the pandemic and the quote and so forth? Well, here we go. I was holding on very strongly to a belief a belief for which I have to say I had no proof. So there, I had no real proof that said that this online wouldn't work. That's just how I felt. Um, and because I was saying yes to that belief, I was saying no to the opportunity to grow, the, the no to the opportunity to, to adapt to a new challenge and, and again, to innovate. So I have to learn to follow my own quotation, which is if I want to continue to shape my own life, at least those aspects of it that lie in my control, I'm going to have to start looking at the yes a bit more unreservedly than even I did one year ago and really ask myself why I say no. And in that way, I'm able to innovate, I'm able to grow, and I'm able to enjoy the work that I get to do. So Ingo, and thanks very much for asking me to share a short story with the Harvest Moon audience. I hope you're having a wonderful event. And of course, please take care of yourselves. Goodbye. Thank you very much, Daniel. And I hope that once this whole pandemic thing is over, we don't go back into our usual status where we defend the way of our lives and we say that we there aren't new ways of trying new things. I hope that we always hold on to the pang of insight that the last year has given us, which is that when needed, we can adapt and we can grow as people faster than we can imagine. Now we're going to take a little musical interlude again. We've got Casper Persson, uh, this time doing it solo, singing Heart of Gold. Take it away, Casper. I wanna live, I wanna give 
it's these expressions I never give that keeps me searching for a heart of gold, and I'm getting old. That keeps me searching for a heart of Searching for a heart of gold, and I'm getting old. It keeps me searching for a heart of gold, and I'm getting old. Keeps me searching for a heart of gold. Keep me searching, but I'm getting old. Keep me searching for a heart of gold. Keep me searching, but I'm getting old. Thank you very much, Casper. Now, Ingela has been patiently waiting to show you the result of her mystery painting, or rather, live art.、Um, That she's been doing over the last three acts, we're very close to finding out which of the people you've seen in Harvest Moon today is featured, and which of the scenes are depicted. So you've made your guess. Now let's find out exactly what Ingela is painting. Final six paintings in Ingela Johansson's 24 painting Harvest Moon collection. This one's about the dawn, and as you can see, the six paintings all represent the blooming of new hope, the blooming of a new start in life. 
Let's see the first one. This one is called Blowing in the Wind. And according to Ingela, it's about starting to feel that no matter how much the wind blows, you can trust yourself. You can stand on your own feet. Sometimes it's about emerging after a tough night, like this second one called Becoming. This is about feeling confident in our own shoes, ready to take on the challenges that lie ahead. Our third piece is called Spring in the Air. This one really requires no, no explanation. Anyone who's experienced spring knows that it comes with its own set of scents, smells, sights, and feelings that give you a newfound sense of optimism moving forward. That's spring in the air. And as you can see, some lovely cherry blossoms there, which I didn't know you could find in Stockholm and in Sweden. But there you go. We all learned something new today, don't we, Ingela? Our fourth piece is called Restart. This was actually the piece that was in the background whilst um, I was interviewing Ingela a couple of acts ago. Restart is all about taking time out to recharge in order to be your best self, which we hope that we've all been able to do over the past year. I guess time will tell on that one. Our fifth piece, we're reaching the end right now. It's called Springtime. And it's about the feeling that you get when you see the first spring flowers, or rather that sense of renewal that you get when after a long night, you see the horizon slowly turning into some form of twilight in the early morning. That's called springtime. And our last piece out of the 24 piece collection, well, that's just fantastic, isn't it? That one is called early morning and it's called Sorry, I actually mixed them up, guys. Well, there you go. Not error free. This one is called springtime, obviously, because you can see the new blooms emerging from the grass. And the one that you saw earlier is called early morning. And that one is about watching the river on an early morning when it is so calm and filled with color. Six pieces there representing what dawn means to Ingela Johansson, the colors that it brings out in her. And as Ingela has said, color is such a great determinant of who you are. And it is so inspired by the world and the environment around you. There you have it, folks. 24 pieces that collectively represent a solo art exhibition and collection, which is not your usual, split into four parts. The sunset, the night, the moon, and the dawn of a new day collectively depicting not only individual stories, but an overall narrative that we can add context to in our own lives. That's Harvest Moon by Ingela Johansson. So unfortunately, this means that we are reaching the end of today's very special virtual artful experience. I do have a few people to thank on behalf of our organizers. But before we do, let's relish the fact that after a long, dark night, and after seeing a glimmer of hope from the moon, we can emerge into a new day that is bright, sunny, and just feels like summertime. Let's listen to the music. Summertime and the lift Fish are jumping and the cotton is shy. Oh, your dad is rich and your ma is good looking. So hush. Little baby, don't, don't you cry. One of these mornings, you're gonna rise up singing. You will spread your wings. And you take to the sky, take to the sky. But did that morning, there's nothing can harm you. So. Hard.
hush, little baby, don't, don't you cry. Folks, that brings us to the end of this virtual artful experience. We hope you'd enjoyed the last hour or so of looking past where you are right now and pretending that there's a big bright moon out there that's inspiring you to try something new, to innovate, to find new direction in life. May the harvest moon bring you a harvest of new wonder, possibilities, and great outcomes for you and your family. Inspired by Ingela Johansson and her friends. Now, before we go, just let me remind you that you can pick up Ingela's paintings at clubartisans.net. Find out more there. They're available in originals, and also certain certain pieces of hers are also available in prints as well. So please head on over to clubartisans.net to find out more, or you can find out more about Ingela at her website, Swedish Art and Design, all one word. Dot com. On that note, I've been Jonathan Case, your host, saying thank you to you for joining us, and a big thank you especially to our organizer, the Expat Fairs, our curators, Winston Liu and Betty C. Ashman, and our artist in residence today, Ingela Johansson, accompanied by her very talented artistic friends, Leah Kinnell, Kasper Persson from Nine Thirds, and the dancer, Suzanne Rink Kulgren. Everybody, wherever you are, Enjoy the rest of your day and let the harvest moon live in your life. Take care now. Come a little bit closer. Hear what I have to say. Just like children sleep and can dream this night away. But there's a full more rising. Let's go dancing in the light. We know where the music's playing. Let's go out and feel the rhyme. Because I'm still in love with you. I want to see you dance again. Because I'm still in love with you.